Roger, you've written frequently in The Telegraph and, of course, mentioned it in The Trouble with Markets, uh, the book, the Eurozone, it's still a huge problem. Do you think that by the time the G20 leaders meet, there will be a bazooka plan? Oh, I'm quite sure that something or other, which sounds very big, will be announced either this weekend or subsequently. The later deadline is in is in November, and they may not actually be able to announce something this coming weekend. But at some point or other, I'm absolutely convinced there will be a big plan, uh, whether it's a bazooka or a tank, I don't know. Uh, there'll be lots of zeros, and there'll be all sorts of handshakes and smiles between various global leaders. But the likes of myself and other analysts, we won't be taken in by that. We'll be looking at the fine print. And the history of these deals and during the Eurozone crisis is that they look good at first blush. And then when you dig beneath the surface, the whole thing collapses. Um, this is what I think is going to happen. It won't be enough. The amounts of money won't quite be what they appear to be. And rumbling beneath the surface is the realization that the problem of the Eurozone isn't only about debt and therefore the need for support or bailouts. It's about a lack of competitiveness in these peripheral countries. If you look at Greece, writing off the debt or haircuts and so on and so forth, that's part of a solution, but it's only part. What Greece is looking at is not years, but decades of austerity, depression and deflation. I don't think that's a recipe for success. We've seen some protest movements uh, spreading around the world. We've got them at St Paul's Cathedral, Wall Street, Frankfurt, and of course particularly where it all started in Madrid. As unemployment grows, and particularly youth unemployment, do you expect to see that movement grow as well? I think this anti-capitalist movement will grow and grow. Uh, it's a major issue, an ideological issue as well as a practical and political issue for governments. At the moment, if you look at the people doing the protesting, they look like typical fringe protesters. When you get your typical Daily Telegraph reader supporting the same cause, then I think you've got to be pretty worried. And I don't think we're so far from that. And the reason is, and it's something I tackle in my book, The Trouble with Markets, the, the, re the reason is the collapse, really, of any justification for the level of rewards that are seen in so many parts of the capitalist system. This is what I think is going to be, in the long run, the most damaging thing from the banking crisis of a few years ago. Less the restriction of credit, more the realisation that so many of these characters who were earning squillions going into their pockets were actually contributing just about nothing to the public wheel, or maybe even subtracting from it. The moral basis of capitalism, I think, has got to be restored. I'm a believer in the system, but I think the financial system has gone wrong and needs to be tackled, as does boardroom pay, because otherwise we're going to find popular support for capitalism disintegrating, and that would be a disaster. Roger Bootle, thank you very much indeed.